Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, wherever you are. Welcome to uh, this Mag Plus webinar. Uh, my name is Mike Haney. I'm the Chief Product Officer for Mag Plus uh, and frequent host of these webinars. And today's session, we're going to take you through uh, some pretty cool stuff. Uh, we just released our 3.2 update to the system yesterday, so we want to just walk you through what's in that, how it works, uh, what you need to do to take advantage of it, and uh, all the cool things you can do with it. Uh, the biggest thing in this update is support for the new Retina iPad. Uh, and I'll show you exactly how you build things for that. Fortunately, it's pretty easy to do. Uh, and the output is absolutely stunning. Uh, this is exactly what you're going to want to do uh, and, and what's going to make your content look amazing uh, is this new device. So I'm going to start by showing you how to, you know, really from the beginning, let's say you're already using Mag Plus uh, or maybe you... Uh, <coughs> maybe you're you're not using it at all just tell you how to get started how to update your system or install it for the first time then we'll look at exporting an existing layout that maybe you want to upgrade to retina or building something from scratch uh, and we'll look at what happens when you have an HTML element in there uh, and I'll show you what we then do on the publish back end in terms of building your app update and build and uploading your new retina issue uh, and then we'll look at a couple of other cool little features that we've added into this release as well so we start to get the tools as we always do here on our site. Uh, this is magplus.com. And so uh, whether you've already got uh, the tools or not, uh, you can come out here and uh, hit the download button. So as of yesterday, everything that you're downloading is, uh, is the new 3.2 version. Now I've already got an account. So if you already have an account at magplus, you don't need to fill out all this stuff. What you want to do is go up here to this login button. Uh, and log in with uh, whatever you uh, originally set as your login credentials. Uh, if you forgot, you can always type the reset password. Um, and this is kind of nice. This is uh, this universal sign-in uh, that we created not too long ago. So you could log in once and you get to this nice little dashboard and we'll keep kind of expanding this. But uh, if you're already a client, you can get into publish from here. Uh, you can jump right into the feature builder. Uh, you want to know about our partner program, which is pretty great. You can click there. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to hit download, and then it's going to jump me right to this choice of uh, what do I need. I'm going to go CS 5.5 uh, and uh, Mac and hit the download button. And uh, now you can see down here in the corner of my uh, thing, it's, it's already downloading in the corner of my browser. If I head into my uh, downloads folder, oh, let me put away my screencaster. So if I head out here, Here's my most recent one. You can see what you get when you download is a DMG file. So this is a, a normal kind of Mac installer. I'm just going to copy that to my desktop so we can see it. Now the one thing you want to do, and this sometimes uh, trips people up a little bit, but uh, the, for the cleanest install, what you want to do before I click this and start running through the installer, I want to get rid of all the old versions that I have on my system. That way you just know there's not going to be any conflicts or anything else. So before I start running that installer, I'm going to jump in here into Applications. There's a few places I want to delete stuff in here. So first I'm going to go up and get rid of the plugins. Uh, and if you've done this before, you know those are found in your InDesign folder. And then uh, here in your Plugins folder, then you see there's a folder called Mag Plus. I'm just going to delete that entirely. I'm going to go back out to Applications. And if I scroll down, you'll see I've got my Mag Plus folder. This is where all my templates and things are. I'm just going to ditch that because we'll put in some new ones. And I'm going to get rid of the production tool as well. So I'm just, I've just put all those in the trash. Now I've got a clean slate uh, to do the install. So now I'm going to get rid of this. Now I can go ahead and run my installer. And you want to do this anytime you, uh, anytime you upgrade. So we just click through very standard installer, uh, agree to the EULA. Uh, this screen here gives you a choice of what kinds of things you want to install. Uh, and so the plugins we're going to take, the templates, sample files, production tool installer. Quick Look is a new thing that we've added to this one. It's just a little tiny uh, system tool that we have that allows you to take a look at a MIB file uh, with the standard Mac preview. The same way you can hit the space bar and take a quick look at a Word file or a PDF. Now you can do that with a MIB here with Quick Look. So uh, you don't have to do it, but it's a handy little tool. It's uh, very small. So I'm just going to take everything, uh, go ahead and install on the regular Mac put in my Mac password and the install is very quick. 
So now if we head back out to our Applications folder, you'll see that now inside my InDesign folder, I got my Mag Plus plugins, uh, my new ones in there. And if I scroll down, uh, now I've got my Mag Plus folder back. And the last step, of course, is just to install the uh, production tool, because that's a, an Adobe Air application, so we just need to run the separate installer. So all we have to do is double click that .air file. Now if you don't uh, uninstall the, uh, the previous version of the, of the production tool or just delete it, you will get an error when you try to do this. So if you get an error, just make sure you got rid of that other one, just throw, threw it in your trash. And hit continue, it's another really quick install. And now we got our production tool. So we'll come back to that in a little bit. Uh, and now you see we've also got our new templates in here. Uh, you'll see there's a couple of new kinds of devices in here, so we'll talk about those and how you use those and when you need them. Uh, and then, of course, we've still got our examples and things in here as well for just kind of helping you learn the system. So let's jump out into InDesign now. I should also mention that it's also a good practice when you are updating the plugins in InDesign, quit out of InDesign first. Uh, quit out of it, or if you forget to, uh, go ahead and replace the plugins, but then quit and restart InDesign. That way it's loading the new plugins fresh, uh, and you know you won't get any uh, errors or mistakes there. As always, the uh, system still works with CS4, 5, and 5.5. Uh, we know CS6 is coming pretty soon, some pretty cool stuff in that from Adobe, and we'll be supporting that right away uh, as soon as that's released to the public as well. Uh, so if you are thinking about upgrading, don't, uh, don't worry about it. We'll have you covered. So what I'm going to walk you through here is I'm going to be using uh, Popular Science, one of our clients, uh, beautiful stuff, as an example today. And what I've got here is, is InDesign is opening. Let me just toss away the browser to kind of clean up our screen a bit. So what I'm looking at here, and I'll just get rid of that folder too, and that one. So this is the, the regular issue folder for uh, Popular Science's April issue. It's the current one that's out. And now it's going to open up a file. Uh, and I'm restarting InDesign that I already had open here before. So this is uh, from the megapixel section of Popular Science. It's a, it's a really nice uh, section, just a big, beautiful photo, a little bit of caption here. And uh, so I'm going to show you what, uh, what to do with this. So this is, a lot of you will be in the situation that Popular Science is in. They've already built their April issue. They built it for the original iPad. So everything is output at that resolution. But now they'd really love to have a Retina version out there, right? Because they've built and submitted their Retina iPad update, uh, which all of you can do as well, and I'll show you that in a little bit. And the great thing about the MagPlus system and how we're dealing with the, the Retina iPad is that you can go ahead and build the two different versions of your issue so that you've got a really fully optimized version for each one. You're taking advantage of all that great higher resolution on the Retina screen. And you can upload both of those to our back end, and I'll show you what that looks like a little later and the system will automatically deliver the right issue to the right device. So uh, the people who have the Retina iPad will get that beautiful Retina high resolution uh, MIB file, issue file, and the people with the older iPads will get the one that, uh, that works for their device, the one that's that lower resolution. So if you're, you know, a magazine's got a current uh, issue out or any kind of publication that you might have, I mean, so much beautiful stuff out there we'd love to see in Retina. Here's what you got to do to get this ready for the Retina, to create your separate version. Just open up the file that you've already created here in InDesign. The great thing is because the iPad and the iPad Retina are the same aspect ratio, you don't have to rebuild this on a new template. So this, is, this was built on the 3.1 template here, but we could still, still take care of that. So the only thing you really need to do is go over here to your plugin, and now you'll notice in the new plugins, in this device pull-down menu, which is something you could pretty much have ignored before because we've really only outputted for iPads. Now if you go in here, you'll see there's Apple iPad, and that's the old one. There's iPad Retina, and then there's Kindle Fire. And we'll talk about the Fire a little bit later. But so if I want to output this thing that I built for the iPad Retina, I just pick iPad Retina here. And make sure my MIB is set to 3.2, because that's the new version. That's the version that will support having a, a Retina version out there. And the other thing I want to do is I'm going to output this to a different issue folder. 
And that's because I don't want to, when I go into my production tool later and I look at all of my verticals that I've exported, I don't want to be confused and see two that kind of look identical in the production tool next to each other and not know which one is which. Because ultimately what we're going to do is make two different issue files, two different MIBs, one for Retina and one for Standard. So just to keep things clean and simple, what I recommend is, is make yourself another issue folder right alongside, uh, right alongside your other one. So what I've done here is just built one that says Retina Issue Folder, and I'm just going to choose that. Now the other thing you're going to want to do before you hit the export button, uh, for a lot of you this won't be an issue, but for some of you creating digital only uh, things where you're, you're creating all your graphics from scratch, is make sure that the images you've got populating here have enough resolution in it uh, to handle that higher screen. And we've got all this out on our site, but just to let you know, the original iPad is 132 pixels per inch. The new iPad is 264, literally double, so it's pretty easy to remember. And the full resolution is 2048 uh, by 1536, or exchange those for holding at the other orientation. So literally double the pixels of the old one. So that means that when you're populating this, if you don't have enough pixels in there to support that higher resolution, it's going to look a little pixelated. So the one way to tell, if you don't know already, again, if you're coming from print, you're probably working with 300 DPI images or 300 PPI images, so you're probably covered. Um, but you can always select your thing, and if you go over here, select your image, uh, in this case the group, you can see this is a TIFF file that we populated this with. Uh, as you know in Mag+, Plus, you can just drop in your, your TIFF and print files, CMYK files directly, and we'll take care of the conversion later when we hit export. So I've got that selected, and if I go down here to my link info, I can see, okay, this is the size of it, it's a TIFF, uh, actual PPI is uh, 300, effective PPI is 600. So I go, okay, this is fine, this will cover it. This is going to look really good even at 264, uh, and I'm not going to lose anything here. So for the most part, you won't have to worry about it, but if you are a little unclear, if you run a fast review and it looks a little funky on your device, uh, come back and check that, or just open up the original file in Photoshop, make sure you have enough pixels there. So again, exporting this for, for Retina, really simple. Pick Retina as your device, make sure your MIB's at 3.2, pick your new uh, issue folder here, and just hit the export button. So as you know, what happens when you hit the export button in, a, in the MagPlus plugin is what we're doing right now is both writing the XML code that tells the system how to render this page, what's on the A layer, what's on the B layer, what's pinned, etc. And as you can see happening in the background here, the other thing that's happening is that we're turning everything into images, because uh, we are still an image-based system. That's how you get the beautiful typographic control that, that you get in InDesign. That's how we preserve that. Uh, and we're turning all those background slides into images, but we're just using Photoshop to do that conversion, to take everything that you put in here and write it at that right resolution. And because we picked Retina, uh, all of those files are being written at 264 PPI, so this, this export that we're making is perfect for that device. I want to point out something else here that you're really going to want to start thinking about if you haven't ever before as you start doing these retina issues. Now of course because uh, retina export is packing in twice the pixels, or actually four times the pixels, twice the resolution as the old one, the file sizes are going to get bigger. You know, there's really just no way around that. You need, you want higher resolution files, always make bigger issue files. But fortunately, there's a lot you can do to mitigate that. You're not going to end up with issue files that are four or five or six times as big. Uh, and one of the ways to mitigate that is pop in here to your settings. If you've never looked at this before, there's some, there's some good stuff in here to pay attention to. The first thing here that says output only PNG images and JPEG quality, this has to do with that Photoshop conversion that we were just watching happen in the background. And what you're really telling it is, what format do you want to do to convert those images to? As I mentioned, we put a TIFF in here originally, uh, but we need either PNGs or JPEGs in that final issue file that we're exporting. So the default in our system is going to be uh, JPEG, and that's because we get a really nice image quality on them, but we get nice small file sizes. And on JPEG, we've got four settings on here that you can choose, uh, top to bottom, low, good, excellent, and great. And don't ask me why great is better than excellent. It's just one of our quirks. Uh, someday we'll change that. But it's really as you see it here, one, two, three, four, great being the best, low being the worst, obviously. The worse the image, the, the lower the, the quality you have here, obviously the smaller the file size is gonna be, but the uh, lower quality you're gonna get in the image. So this is really worth playing with and testing uh, as you're doing your export for the retina or, or even for your regular issue if you haven't before. And 
Not that you want to change it on every vertical, that's more than you really want to mess with probably, uh, but do a couple of tests, figure out what's working for your images, where you're starting to see any degradation, and then pick the level just above that. And that way you're going to get the smallest possible file size uh, without sacrificing anything on the image quality. Now let's say you don't want a JPEG, you want it to be a PNG. One reason you might want that is maybe you've got an image in there that's got some transparency in it where you need that transparency to come through so you can see the B layer behind it, uh, for instance. In that case, you can always pop in here and click Output Only PNG Images, and then all the export is going to be PNG, it won't be JPEG. What we found in some testing here, playing with pop size files and a few other clients, is that JPEG quality good seems to work pretty well. Uh, at that setting, we get a pretty small file size, and we can't really see any image degradation. That may not be true for everybody, uh, particularly if we've got a lot of photographers who use the system. They're going to be very particular about all the pixels in there, uh, as they should be. You may want to experiment with some other things, but JPEG quality good is, is probably a good one to, to put it at. Uh, or at least to try in the beginning. And once I put it this way, now every time I open up a new file, it's going to keep this set, so I don't have to keep changing this every time around. Do it once and you're good, and then if you need to pop in and change it for a, a layout or two, go ahead and do that. The other checkbox here is checked by default, and that's downscale images uh, using Photoshop. And all that means is that that downscaling that's happening is using Photoshop and not InDesign. That's really what, what you want to happen. And then, of course, you can pick the version of Photoshop if you've got a couple versions and the, the method by which the resampling happens. Uh, and so there's some choices in here. A lot of you who really know about Photoshop and those things will understand the differences among these. It's deeper than we'll get into today. But if you're getting weird things happening, uh, weird pixelization or, or stray pixels in your conversion, go in and try changing uh, this and you might see some differences. The other thing I want to talk about that's uh, new in this settings palette that's important for you to know about is this universal iPad MIB. And what that means, as I've been talking about here, and let me just open up a, a help file for you just to help illustrate this. For most of the stuff that you export, for really everything that you're exporting, now that you're thinking about, I need a, a retina version and a non-retina version so I can get the optimal resolution to both devices, uh, you want to create two separate files because that way uh, nobody's downloading any extra pixels that they don't need. None of your end users, in other words, you're not getting too big of files. The one place you're going to want to not do that is in your embedded help page. And that's here in the system. If I pop into my uh, reviewer here, now, as you guys know if you've watched webinars before, I'm going to be showing you all the reviewer stuff here on the simulator. Uh, this is a simulator that works with uh, Xcode. Uh, if you've got Xcode, if you're a developer, you can download Xcode and you get this simulator. If you do, we can send you a version of the MagPlus Reviewer. Actually, you can download it off of our uh, support site that will run on the simulator. So if you don't have a Retina iPad and you need to check things out or you just need to look on your desktop or maybe you want to do a webcast for a client like this, simulator is always handy to use. Uh, so that's what I'll be showing you today. So the help issue, any, any of you who have a, an app with us know that the user can always tap the help button and that brings up uh, an issue. In our case it's the inspiration issue here. And that issue is actually embedded in the app itself. So that's part of the app that people download. It's always there. And that means that, that for that one we want to have one file that has both a, a retina version and a non-retina version uh, so that the right one loads on the right device. And that's what the universal MIB is. So Universal MIB is going to create one file that contains both versions. So you could use this on anything you wanted to. You just hit this to on, or if you hit ask on es export, then when you hit the export button, it's going to say, uh, hey, do you want to uh, create a Universal iPad MIB? Uh, and it'll explain. It contains both high-res and low-res images, and it's going to be big because it's like taking both your different MIBs and putting them together into one issue. So that's why we, we recommend use this only for your embedded help page. That's the help page that you upload out and publish when you're doing your app build. It's not the help page in the issue. You treat that like everything else. Uh, so for the most part, you can ignore this universal, uh, universal iPad MIB setting here. Just leave that to off uh, and you're good. If you have questions about this stuff, I know it's a lot to kind of take in. We've got a whole bunch of resources out on our, our support site. You can go out and read about this stuff as well, support.magplus.com. So again, popping back to our, uh, uh, to our file here, 
uh, that was it. That was all I had to do. So let's just hit a, a full review on here and we'll just take a look at the difference between exporting for uh, Retina and exporting for non-Retina and I'll show you why you really want to do this on the Retina iPad. Now unfortunately the once we get up now into these 264 PPI resolutions my screen uh, like all computer screens is only 72 PPI so we're not getting real one-to-one -one. Uh, so right now you can see that in my simulator I've got iPad Retina selected as the uh, version but I actually have this really shrunk down if I give this a pixel to pixel uh, you know exactly seeing it at the size it would be let me go out here to my window and scale to 100 percent look what happens I, I can't even fit the whole thing on my giant iMac screen that I'm using here um, so uh, so I have to kind of zoom it out like this so you can actually see the difference but I'm gonna zoom into 100 percent even though we won't see the full page just because I want to show you the difference between a, a retina and a non retina file on the retina screen so here I'm just gonna use the uh, I'll just use fast review and that'll work actually let me use full review here to show you the difference so now I'm gonna export for retina I'll hit my full review now as you probably know when you hit full review the difference between full review and fast review is that full review is going out and it's triggering Photoshop to do that image downscaling so you're getting a really exact version of what it's going to look like when you hit export fast review just uses InDesign and it does a little bit lower resolution previews uh, so it goes much quicker you don't have to wait for Photoshop to do everything but you're not getting quite of an as accurate or pixel perfect uh, resolution on here so now you can see my super zoomed up uh, export here so this is what it would look like on your retina iPad uh, again it's a little tricky to tell because we're here on the on the 72 ppi screen but you can see this is really excuse me uh, never good to sneeze into your webinar mic uh, but you can see we've got really beautiful text on here it's really clean you can hardly see a pixel let's go back and just take this same layout we'll export it for iPad uh, again we're leaving or we'll just do a fast review for iPad or full review rather so now it's doing the same thing but now all these image conversions that are happening are happening for a 132 PPI not the 264 that the retina actually is so we'll see what happens when we export it out here all right so I hope it's coming through the webinar that you can see the difference here now all of a sudden our text is really pixelated on here and that's because the way that Apple's handling the, the difference between the the two devices and the fact that that most apps and most content aren't yet rebuilt to be optimized for this new iPad is it'll just upscale everything it's just like going into Photoshop and and zooming into 200 percent on an image it'll fill the space but it doesn't have enough pixels to really fill the space so you get this pixelization on it so all of your issues that are out there right now everything you've built if there are people walking around with retina iPads and they want to look at your content they can do that they can still open your app they can still read the issues it's just not gonna look as good it's not gonna look as good as it could it'll look about the same as it does on the old iPads but it won't have that beautiful amazing crisp uh, pixel free look that you get on the retina version uh, so that's why you know we really recommend take this extra step hit retina point to your new issue folder hit export boom you're done and so the way that looks out in the production tool let me pop out here and we've already done our export here for our whole issue so here all I've done is I've got two different issue folders going and first I'm just pointing to my retina issue folder uh, and you know you've always got your pull down here or if you want to add one you can hit the plus button um, so I just go right to my retina issue folder hit select here's all my verticals coming through here these are all my retina ones uh, that I've uh, exported and then all I have to do when I'm ready to, to put a to, to make this into an issue file is hit the create MIB button when I do that as you just like uh, just like before if I go out to my issue folder let's find this and open it up here set my Dropbox retina MIB here's my retina issue folder when I hit my create MIB button this is what I get I get my MIB file out here so this is my issue file this is this is the thing I upload to publish 
So now let's pop out to publish and show you what to do out there. All right, so now I'm out in my Popular Science MagPlus Publish portal. Uh, they've got uh, uh, several issues out here. It's April now. Let's say I've made my, my Retina MIB for April. I've done my re-export on every page with that iPad Retina selected. I've hit my Create MIB, so I got my new MIB file. Now all I have to do is go out here to select the issue. Oh, I better log back in. Here we go. So I just select my issue. Now I've already published this once before, PopSci has with the iPad. But now you'll see out here in your issue, you've got a couple of choices. There's iPad and there's iPad Retina. Uh, now I had tried to upload a file before and I did something a little bit wrong. So I got my invalid here and we'll fix that later. Um, but to, to upload your Retina iPad, just go back to your upload screen. This is the same as you've done before. The only difference is now you're going to upload two files. And you can see here now in the upload screen, I've got a, a, a radio button here where I can choose. If I want to upload an iPad Retina, I just make sure that the iPad's selected. I hit Browse, point to my, my regular MIB. That'll upload. Then I just come here, hit Retina, hit Browse, point to my Retina uh, version, hit Upload, and then I'll have both. Uh, and we'll be able to see that, that both exist uh, out in your Issues area. So you can see if I look back at some of my other issues out here, it, it notes that I've only got a, an iPad MIB up. Now some, of, some people have asked us as we've been talking about this coming, can I just do a, a Retina, a super high resolution uh, file for everybody? Uh, and, the, and the problem is you can't because it won't really downscale, it won't downscale, it won't load at all on the old iPads. So if you really want to only do one issue file, you got to go with that lower resolution, which frankly you'd probably want to do anyway because there's 60 some million of those devices out there and probably only 3, 4, 5 million of the new ones because uh, the, the, the old issue files, the, the lower resolution issue files will read on both devices. A Retina issue file will only read on a Retina iPad. And that's, that's really important. Don't only output a Retina because uh, the people with the old devices won't be able to see it at all. And again, you can always see here, it'll say available MIBs, available markets. And this is really interesting because really what we've done here with, with the support for the Retina and the changes we've made to the back end is this is how we'll start supporting all the other devices we've got coming. So I mentioned out here in the, uh, in the device pull down, now you see Kindle Fire. And if we pop out to our Mag Plus folder, let's just pop back into Applications. And here's my Mag Plus folder. I go into my templates. Now you can see I've got a Kindle Fire template here. So the Kindle Fire, of course, is a, is a different size uh, altogether. The Kindle Fire is, is 1024 by 600 as a, as a uh, pixel size, and it's 160 something PPI. So if you want to start building custom versions of your, of your material for the Kindle Fire, it's really it's the same procedure. You're just going to build here on this template. You can see that my safe area is a little smaller and my sides that are visible only in certain orientations are a little bit bigger because it's more of a, a narrow shape. So while the iPad is 1024 by 768, this is what the, I'll just draw a box so you can see it. You know, this is the, the aspect ratio of the fire. It's a little bit more narrow. So you can see that the template looks a little bit differently and that's why we give you a fresh template because if you want to just take what you built for the iPad and shrink it down, it's not going to work. If I just take all of, uh, oh, I didn't want to draw a box there, I wanted to select. If I just take all my material, I copy it, I pop over to my template here, I paste in place, and paste it down here. You, know, you can see this is not this is not fitting. You know, they're different devices, they're different sizes. So we got we'd have to do some tweaking here to make everything fit for our, our Kindle Fire and make it look right. Um, but once you've done that, once you've done your design work and you've kind of tweaked things around and you've gotten it to to crop and look the way you want to on the fire and all the same features you want are, are there. So you can still use your dual layers, you can put in movies, HTML, etc. Uh, all you'd do is hit export. You'd go through that exact same procedure, export to a new issue folder that was for fire only. And then when you go out into, into publish, uh, in a couple of weeks when we roll out our, our ability to, to build a Kindle Fire reader app, then when you go into your upload and MIB file, you'll have another choice here that'll be Kindle Fire. 
we also announced yesterday, so you'll have a new one here, iPad, iPad Retina, you'll see Fire. We also announced uh, yesterday that we're coming to the iPhone. Uh, starting in, uh, in June, we're going to release an iPhone version of Mag Plus. Same thing. You'll get a template that's sized for the iPhone. You'll get all the great creative features you have. Uh, we've reworked the UI a little bit on the Reader app, so it really is optimized for the iPhone and not just the shrunken down iPad version. And then you'll see more devices up here. So really, we've laid the groundwork for, th for the future in which you can make optimized versions of your content for any device that you want. And we've got some other really cool tricks coming down the road that'll make that even easier uh, than just copying and pasting and tweaking. We're going to automate a lot of that for you. But you can create your optimized version for all your devices. You can upload two, three, four different, five different MIBs if you want to as we expand the devices. And the system's always going to know when somebody clicks April 2012 what, it, what device they're requesting from and deliver them the right MIB for that. So figuring out how to do the, uh, the uh, iPad Retina is, is good for your workflow and to, to kind of build this in and know, okay, now I got about an extra uh, five minute process on the end of my export where I'm going to do a second export to it. It really shouldn't add much time overall uh, to your workflow, but worth uh, definitely worth doing because the difference in getting that optimized content is really huge. It really looks great on these new devices. I want to show you one other thing when it comes to this exporting and, and dealing with, uh, with both devices at once. Actually, I'll show you a couple more things. Now, you'll notice out here in the templates, there's now iPad and there's iPad Retina. So people say, well, which, you know, let's say I'm building from scratch. I'm creating my, my May issue now uh, and I'm starting from scratch. Which one of these should, should we use? Well, if you want to do both versions, use the Retina. Start with this one because that one's going to handle uh, both versions okay. Uh, so build on here, and then you can still do your two exports. Hit the iPad button, export for that. Hit the iPad Retina button, export for that, and away you go. If you're only going to do uh, the lower resolution version, that's all you want to support right now, uh, then use the old iPad version. The other thing I want to show you is what about HTML? People have been asking. We know a lot of you embed HTML elements. Uh, what do you do about that? So let me just pop back out to that... Uh, that PopSci file and I'm going to show you an example of a place where they use that to do the scrolling text. We know a lot of people like doing that so I'm going to pop into the editor's letter. So on this particular vertical uh, the design team down there has decided that instead of having our kind of standard uh, you know the way you know you do this one way to do this page, I won't say the, the right way to do it or the only way to do it would be just to take this long column of text here that's Mark's editor's letter and uh, put that on the A layer and then people can scroll up and down and away you go. On this one they've decided, I assume because they want people to look at uh, Mark's handsome face the whole time, that they just want a scrolling text box here. So they just want this text to scroll inside of, of this box. The way we do that, of course, is with HTML. We've got some good tutorials out on the site to, to tell you how to do that. Uh, but let's say you've already built this for, uh, for the, the lower resolution iPad. Now you've got an, an image in here. The image is your text, but you've got an image in here that's at the lower resolution. If you want this to look right on the new device, you've got to make a new version that's at that higher resolution. Um, so really easy to do, fortunately. So the way we typically make these these uh, HTML scrolling text boxes is go ahead and lay the text out in InDesign so you get all that type control, you get everything set exactly the way you want it. Hit the copy button on it, then go into Photoshop and go uh, New. And what, what it's going to do is read the clipboard and realize the size of the thing I've just copied to the clipboard. Make sure your resolution's at 266 here. And we'll just give this a name. Hit OK. It's going to give me a, a blank canvas the right size. And now I'm just going to hit Edit, Paste. And go ahead and place that. So now I've got a, a, a essentially an image of my text. I'm going to hit File, Save As. I'm going to save this as a PNG so I get really nice crisp text. And I should probably pop back into the right folder here for it. Here we are here. Edit. Editor's letter, HTML, and make this a PNG. And in fact, what I'm going to do in this one is just save right over my old one. 
Um, you can make a second version, doesn't really matter, but I'll just make it the same thing. Save it, hit replace. All right, so now I've got a 266 pixel version, or 264 pixel version, rather, uh, of this that I can place in here. So now I draw my box where I want my scrolling to happen. I make it an HTML box. And for my uh, HTML, I point to this HTML file. And I'll pop out here and show you what that looks like. Like I said, we've got some tutorials out on the site, but it never hurts to see it. So I'm just going to open this up with a program called Text Wrangler. You can use any HTML thing you want. All this is right here is a web page, and the only thing that web page is set to load is this image. So I've got my uh, body. The only thing in my body is an image tag. Here's where I'm pointing to that image I just made at letter.png. That's all you need to do. So you want to keep using this, changing it, just put a new uh, image in there. And then that's the HTML file I'm going to point to here. Now one thing to know about when you're making uh, the HTML here in the higher resolution in the retina is you want to hit the scale contents to fit block button. That's going to make it look right. Otherwise it's going to blow up in here and it's going to look a little bit too big and weird. The other thing I always remember when you're doing these HTML things is even inside of an HTML block you can put an image. and You want to do that so that the preview for it looks right. Otherwise in the little thumbnail preview this is going to look empty. It's going to look blank. Uh, so drop the image in there. Just take that same PNG you just made. Uh, there you go. And place it here in the box. So now let's just hit our, uh, we can just do a fast review on this. And we'll pop out to our screen. So you can see we've got, oh, I broke it. I broke it. Nope, there we go. It just took a little, little slow to load. Um, so you can see we've got, and I'll zoom it all the way in so you can see we've got our nice crisp uh, picture here, you can see our text looks as crisp as, as regular text does. If I zoom back out, you can see how this works. I'm just scrolling inside of this box. Uh, I'm not changing my B layer picture at all, and away you go. Another trick that a lot of people don't uh, know or use, people ask us, you know, how come text is always images? How come text isn't text? There actually is a really easy way to make text text. So what you can do is take all your text that you want that you want to have in this uh, in this ed letter here. And in that HTML file, remember I showed you this HTML file here and I told you basically what we're doing with this HTML, this is just a web page. And my HTML box is a web browser. That's the way to always think about these elements is anytime you draw a box and you say, uh, you, you set the object type as HTML, what you've just made is a mini web browser. And that web browser is going to load whatever you tell it to load here, whether that's a web address or whether it's a .html file. So the trick we usually use that I just showed you is, well, we turn that text into an image. That way we get our perfect, uh, you know, pixel-perfect type setting that we've done over here. And it still scrolls up and down in that window, uh, the same way that a web page scrolls up and down because it doesn't quite fit into your browser window. That's all we're doing. If you want the text as text, instead of making an image here, just put it, just make the text. So I've pasted that text. I copied that text out of here. Uh, here, maybe I even want to give it a, a little head style. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just using all the normal HTML uh, typesetting tags that I've got here. So those of you who know HTML know you can call on different fonts, you can have different sizes, you can have uh, ITAL and bold and all of those things. So now I'm going to save this. I'm going to close it. And here I don't have to do anything because I just saved right over, so I'm still pointing to this one. And now let's hit Fast Review and see if this worked. And essentially what this is going to give me is just a, if I did it right, so you see the difference here? Now I've got, still working the same way, right? I've still created a, a web page that's, that's loading into a browser window, that's my box, that's smaller than I can see. So it's given me an automatic scroll here. But the difference is, now this is text. So I can do all the things that you can do uh, with text in any other iOS app. I can select it. Now it's a little hard to do with my mouse here, but I can select things. I can copy it. I can hit the definition button. Uh, if I wanted to make this some other uh, kind of font, I could use HTML tags to do that. Here I gave it a head one, so I've actually got a head on here. Uh, if I wanted to take the signature that's down at the bottom here, this is a file. I could go ahead and put that in the web page. 
but entirely possible to do. If you ever have areas that you want the text to really be text so that people can get the definitions or do the copy paste, just do that quick and easy HTML element in there. So I want to show you a couple of other quick things here uh, that we squeezed into this release before I, I end today. So that's all the retina business. As I said, all this stuff out on support.magplus.com. We got articles, we got forum posts, walk you through all of these things as you get into it, but really couldn't be simpler. Just build it, export it twice. That's all you really need to know. We got a couple other things in this release though. One is a, is a feature we've asked for, uh, we've been asked for a lot, and I'm gonna just hit the Actually, I'm going to cancel out of this, and I'm going to show you on a different one. Let's go back to this Ed letter, because this will be a really good example. So let's say that instead of using HTML here, I did this this way. Let me hit Fast Review, and we'll take a look at this. So what I'm going to show you here affects this A and B layer architecture that you use. Oh, i got to make sure i got both my layers on. So... Default behavior for Mag Plus, as many of you know, you got a background layer and then you got a top layer, an A layer that can slide over the top of it. Pretty straightforward, right? Here's my A layer. It's sliding over the top of my B layer, which is here. I can double tap and I can turn off that A layer. So sometimes that's a really good uh, thing to have, like here. Let's take a look at this one. Here we put our big beautiful image on our background layer. and We put our, our text caption uh, here on the A layer. And it's a really useful, really cool architecture to have because it means that I don't have to worry about squeezing all this text into some blank space over here or, God forbid, making my image smaller because this is way too cool of an image. I don't want to shrink this down. But I do want people to be able to see it. So I can just double click and I can get rid of this text over here and just look at my image. Let's go back here. So in this case, uh, here we've got our B layer and we got our A layer and I like that effect you know I like to be able to keep scrolling all the text that I want to see here All right, I want to scroll all of this so I don't have to have my old print argument about how many words fit on a page because there is no such thing in the digital world uh, so here I can fit all my stuff on here I want to keep this in the B layer so it just sits there nicely uh, next to the image uh, I don't want to mess with the HTML thing that I just did but here's the problem with this if I double click as a user because maybe I've been accustomed to doing that on other pages. Now I got a big blank page. This does not look good. You know, as a designer, you put a lot of care into this page. You don't want people to see a big blank uh, spot back here. So, really simple change, but fixes that. Out here in the plugin, there's a checkbox that says always display both A and B layer. Another way to, to say that pops up in the little note that you see here, and that's what we're doing is disabling the double tap. So, if I check that and then I hit the review button, it means that on this particular layout, and you set this per, per vertical, when I double tap, nothing happens. This is still an A and B layer design, but I can't turn off the A layer. So that way you can get this nice scrolling text, you know, all the features of this infinite canvas the A layer gives you next to your B layer, and you don't have to worry about blank spots. Just a little extra something, you know, again, expanding that flexibility of how do you put your information onto this canvas and tell the stories you want to tell and, and make the layouts you want to make. Uh, really simple. So now you can do both layer design with double tap, both layer design without double tap. You can do an A layer only. Uh, you can do a B layer only lots of flexibility. Then you can also do our little HTML tricks if you want text scrolling inside of a box. Uh, endless possibilities for how you present this information. The other thing I want to show you is back out here in Publish. And I'll pop into another brand. So you've seen all this, you're ready to go Retina, you're excited to get your stuff out there, what do you have to do? Well, aside from downloading the tools and starting to export in Retina, uh, like we just showed, uh, you need a new app build out there. We need to get you an app build out live that can read a Retina uh, MIB, it can read a Retina issue that you've created, but also we want one that has, uh, you know, pixel perfect Retina icons in it as well. All those icons that are in the navigation, uh, if we pop back out to our sim, bring up our nav, you know, your branding bar that you've put up here, all your bookmarks, review, etc. Uh, now we need higher resolution versions of these too, so they really, you know, they look completely native on the Retina devices. Fortunately, one app will work on both devices. You don't need to build two versions of the app. It's just one, one app, but it's going to have both versions of these things in here. 
So when you go to do your, your app update, normally you can just click this Generate Build button. Here we need you to do an extra step. You want to pop into your image files, at least into here, and make sure you add retina versions of, of anything you've customized. Uh, so you can see now it's going to have double the image things here. We've got a regular icon. Now we need that icon in retina form. We give you the pixel dimensions that you need to worry about. Same thing with the loading screens. Same thing with any tile images you have in the background. Uh, and then if you have customized anything in the navigation, you know, a lot of people are customizing the active, oops, pop back here, the active versions of these. You can see mine pops up orange. Maybe you want that to be blue, you want it to be red, something else. Uh, so that's just uploading a new image out in the back end. If I pop into navigation icons, we'll see if we've got them up here for American Photo or not. You just need to upload new versions of those. Now we've got, uh, yeah, so we can see here they're selected as an orange. So now we've got a regular selected and a retina selected. So original was 24 pixel square, this one's 48. We've got some uh, example icons here. So you can just download this. We'll give you, it'll, it'll give you all the, the Photoshop image files you need to open these up and do a customization. It's very quick and easy to do. You can just use the replace color function in Photoshop. Uh, so it won't take you long, but just make sure you run through this step. Uh, and in fact, it won't let you build a new app until you do. Uh, these things are going to render uh, incomplete until we make sure you've got all the right uh, resolution icons in there. So that's one thing to know about in, out in Publish, uh, that you're going to do your app build. That's going to produce a new app. When you click that Generate Build button, you're going to submit that, uh, that .zip file, that, that app file, to Apple as an uh, app update really simple to do. Uh, again, we've got tutorials out on the site for taking care of that uh, as well. But the one other thing I want to show you, which is pretty uh, cool, uh, the one other feature we, we squeezed into this one is uh, what we call the inclusive issue. So we've always had the possibility in MagPlus for you to, you've probably seen this in our general settings out here under admin, there's been this this thing that says inclusive issue, and, and most people have, have not really paid much attention to this. Um, but what it what it traditionally meant, if you had that selected to yes, is the first time somebody downloads your app, a window will pop up that says, hey, thanks for downloading the app. You get a free issue. Uh, click here to download it. And it will automatically start downloading one free issue for them. What we've done is just added a little bit of flexibility to that setting. So now you can do that, and you can choose which issue you want it to be. So yeah, let me give you a for instance, what a lot of people have said they're going to do with this function is they're going to click this to yes, and you can see with American Photo, the current issue is March, April. So maybe they'll give away January, February for free, uh, just one time to everybody who downloads the app. Uh, anybody who already has the app, this won't affect them at all. This is only for new people coming into the brand for the first time. The advantage to this is really that it gives you a chance to let people sample your content, to see how amazing it is, uh, without having to build preview issues if you don't want to. Um, just give them one of the back issues for free. Maybe you've got a special issue that you want to give away to everybody uh, for free uh, to let them try it out, get them hooked, and then they'll jump in and, and start subscribing. So if you want to turn this on, you don't need to do an app update to do it. It's a live setting. Uh, just come out into your admin general settings, change that to yes, and pick an, an issue from uh, the list here. So this is all your published issues. That's what will pop up here. Um, so now no and none, but we can easily change that. The last thing I want to mention uh, before I end here today, um, two more things I want to mention. I'm going to just show you the support site because I keep referencing it. Um, but we keep adding out here. We keep making this better. Um, and, and really, you keep making it better because now the great thing about this site is we've got forums out here where you can post questions and other users, other, other MagPlus experts out there can answer them for you. And we're also very active in this, uh, answering questions and whatnot. Uh, so come out here to support.magplus.com. Anytime you've got a question, search out here works really well. They'll bring up whatever you need. Uh, we've pinned some of these new topics to the top so you can see these are all the new features out here that I just went through. Uh, then we've got all the support things broken down by section, designing and creating, using the tools. Uh, here's our regular Q&A, people saying, hey, I'm having trouble with this. We'll pop in, do an answer. Then all of those answers will come up in the support. Uh, so always hit the, the search button here. Chances are we've probably answered your question before, uh, or it's some a tutorial is somewhere out here. 
You can also get to all of our videos out here on our video channel. Definitely a good thing to know about. The last thing I want to mention is uh, this Magnify Your World contest. So we ran a design contest before. It was really great. We got people building all kinds of super cool stuff on the platform, so we're doing it again. And this time we're giving away five grand. Uh, it's a really nice prize, and we've got different categories to it. Uh, we've got a people's choice. We've got a judge's choice. Uh, so come out here to magplus.com slash magnify. You can also get here off our home page. Whether you're already working with the tools and, and building something for your day job, but you have an idea of your own, uh, whether you're a student out there trying things, uh, you know, anything you can think of to build, uh, build a cool idea, show us what you can do with these tools, show us a new definition of what an issue should look like on a tablet, uh, and enter the contest out here. Uh, it's, really, uh, it's really cool, and we're seeing some great stuff come through. We'd love to see what you guys build with these tools. So I think that about covers it for the, the 3.2 update. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, head out to the support for uh, you know deeper tutorials through on any of these things, and uh, we'll come back at you with another webinar soon. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day.